Okay, we successfully completed that very simple mission. So I'd like to take a little bit of time to talk about the uh, other commands we have available in a little bit more detail. If we look at the full list of commands, uh, they can actually be broken down into two different types. So at the top we have uh, what are called navigation commands. So from waypoint to takeoff, these are navigation commands and they will directly affect the location of, of the copter. Uh, below that we have conditional and do commands and for the most part these ones uh, you know are modifying kind of auxiliary features of the copter you know camera or what have you. Uh, they do not normally directly impact the location of the copter. So I will start by talking about the navigation commands. So we have the waypoint command, which of course we used a moment ago. Uh, and we of course can set the lat, lawn, and altitude. The altitude is in meters. Uh, what you can also do, which we didn't talk about, was you can set a delay. So if you put five in there, that will make the copter stop uh, for five seconds at the waypoint. Uh, these other two parameters, the hit rad, or hit radius, and yaw angle, uh, cannot be set, I'm afraid. These are not supported. Um, the hit radius is actually the same as the, uh, you know, if it was working, it would be the same as the WP nav radius right here, uh, which is defaulting to 200, which means two meters, which means that the copter will consider that the waypoint has been completed if, once the copter is within two meters of, of, of the waypoint. The next command is loiter unlimited. Now this just means loiter forever at that location. So uh, this really would only be useful at the very end of a um, list of commands because the copter will never proceed to the command below it. Next command type is loiter turns. This is the same as circle mode. Um, so in this case, uh, the copter would fly to this location and then start flying in a circle around this location. Um, you can specify the number of turns that it will do. So for example, three rotations of the, uh, you know, three, you know, three 360 degree uh, circles around this location. Uh, if you go into the advanced parameters list, there's a couple of things that you can do to control that circle. For example, the circle radius, you can set it here. This is in meters, so that would do a 10 meter radius circle. You can also control the uh, rate of turn. So this is uh, um, five, which means five degrees per second it will, it will, it will turn at. One thing to note is that uh, no matter how high this, you set this, uh, the copter will never go over the WP nav speed specified down here. So it will never travel at more than five meters per second around the circle. Uh, I forgot to mention that uh, if you set the circle radius to zero, then the copter will just spin in place. So it'll do kind of a panorama shot. Next nav command is loiter time. So you can put in a time in here in seconds. So for example, 60 seconds. Uh, this is really very similar to just adding a delay onto a waypoint, although I, I believe that you can actually make this time much longer. So a waypoint delay is uh, maxes out at 65 seconds. You can probably set this to 600 seconds if you wanted to. So you can make it loiter in place for 10 minutes if you have a battery that uh, will keep you in the air that long. Next navigation command is the return to launch, which we already talked about. It does not take any additional parameters. Uh, and in fact, the loiter lat and uh, altitude are also ignored. Next nav command is a land command. So uh, in 291B and earlier versions of RG Copter, the uh, lat, lawn, and altitude were ignored. Um, in RG Copter 3.0 and beyond, well, the altitude is still ignored because uh, you know it's going to land at zero altitude. But um, if you do specify a lat and lawn, it will first fly to that location and then land there. Um, in in 291B, it would just land at 
whatever location it was at when it hit this command. So for example, if there was a, if you had a waypoint here, waypoint seven, and waypoint six here, and then a land command directly after it, uh, it would land at waypoint six. Next navigation command is takeoff. We already talked about this one. Uh, lat and long parameters are meaningless, but the altitude is used, and that's of course the uh, final altitude that you wanted to um, achieve. Uh, the very last navigation command is the ROI command, which is region of interest. What it does is it, it momentarily points the copter at that location. Uh, you know, I think in, in future versions, Spartacopter will enhance that a little bit to um, maybe allow you to specify the amount of time to stay pointing at that, um, at that location or, or something. Okay, I believe that that brings us to the end of the navigation commands. Uh, I've never used path planning, so I can't tell you anything about that. Uh, in fact, uh, I've never even used uh, conditional delay, so I can't talk about that one either. Uh, one thing I should mention, though, is that all of these conditional and do commands, these must appear between two navigation commands. So if I, for example, set up a condition change alt and then provide a, an altitude 50, this must have, you know, 50 meters, this must appear between two navigation commands. So there we are. Oops, I have two. So like this. If it doesn't appear between two, you'll find that it just is not executed. It can't be the first in, in a list of commands, nor can it be the last. It needs to appear between, you know, you can have other conditional commands, um, you know, right after it or before it, but there must, in this whole list of commands, there must be at least one navigation command before it and one afterwards. And these conditional commands or do commands will be executed in order um, after the navigation command starts. Okay, the next conditional command is condition change alt. So this should change the altitude of the copter to 25 meters. The lat and long are ignored. The conditional yaw command you can provide, certainly provide an angle. So for example, 90 will make the copter aim uh, due east. The next conditional command is the do set mode. I would not use this. Um, this you could use this, for example, to uh, set your mode to loiter, uh, but I have never tried this and I do not really see a good reason to use this, so I would not use this. Next is do jump. This can be useful. So in this case, if you wanted to repeat a number of commands uh, over and over again, you can do that. So in this case, I could put in an eight here. This so is the waypoint number eight, and I want it to be repeated three times. So now what will end up happening is it will run down this list of commands. It will hit command 14, which is a do jump. It will jump back and and do this list of commands again, it will do it three times. So in total, it will actually do this four times, right? It'll go once through, and then it'll do one, two, three times, and then it will continue on. Next, we have do change speed. This allows you to basically override the WP nav speed, which is the horizontal speed that the copter uh, will travel in. So this is in meters per second. So say the default is five meters per second, but you want to slow it down for a particular section of the, um, of the mission to two meters per second, you could do this. Next, we have the do set home. Now this would allow you to basically override the home location uh, partway through the mission. It's hard to know why you'd want to do that, but um, in any case, if you did this, then the uh, if you and then you executed an RTL afterwards, uh, it would not return to the point at which you armed the motors, but it would instead report return to this location. The next command is the do set parameter, which uh, I expect if you happen to know the individual number of the parameter, that would be its number in EEPROM, and the value that you want to set it to, you can probably override any any parameters value uh, you know, during a mission. Next is D 
do set relay. Uh, this is useful if you want to trigger the relay. Now the relay is just a pin on the APM uh, and you can set it to be either high or low. Now how do you know which pin it is? The relay pin is hard-coded and uh, I forget which pin it is but it's somewhere on wiki. The next command is the do set servo. Uh, you can type in any servo number here from 0 to 11 and the PWM value that you want it to move the servo to and it should do that for you. Uh, normally servos are connected to channels uh, 10 and 11 on the left side of the APM2. Next is the do repeat servo. This is the same but apparently you can make it move the servo more than once. I have never actually tested this but uh, if you try it and find that it doesn't work uh, please raise an issue on the uh, Arducopter issues list and we'll have a look at it. Do Digicam configure is not supported. Do Digicam control. This will uh, cause the camera control to fire. Now you can set up your camera on the configuration screen, hardware options, camera gimbal right down at the bottom here. Basically this can be triggered from a mission using the do digicam control command uh, and it doesn't take any additional arguments. By the way, this will also create a, uh, an entry in the data flash log including the lat, lawn, altitude, roll, pitch, and yaw attitude of the, of the copter at the time that the shutter was pushed. Do mount configure, I do not believe is supported. Do mount control, I have never tried. Thank you very much.